Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everyday Man Sports Show. I'm Average Joe here with... I'm Jess Josh. All right, guys, we're going to blast another one out to you. And if you paid attention to sports radio, ESPN, anything today, then we all know that the first story is going to start with Ray Rice and his indefinite suspension and his termination of his contract with the Baltimore Ravens. Thoughts on that? Um, We've been avoiding this. Yeah, we we're going to conclude it. We're going to conclude. There was nothing to talk about uh, until everything came together. So uh, yeah, the video came out. It's all over TV, which I think shouldn't happen. But everyone's seen it now. Uh, they had to do this. The Ravens had to cut him. The they NFL got caught had with their to hands in the cookie him. jar. Yeah, you had to. They, like no, there would be no other uh, tolerant thing to do. <laughs> no one would. That's Never respect. For, first of all, uh, Ray Rice was given credit and applauded during uh, during this process um, for coming out and being a man and admitting the truth. It's on camera. He knew it. Mm -hmm. What is he? Was he going to lie about what's on camera? The only logical explanation that he could give is the truth. Uh, there's nothing else. There, there, there's no getting around the truth. And the Ravens, I don't applaud the Ravens or the NFL because they were caught with their hands in the cookie jar. They had no other option, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, and if anything, it's distasteful to see this video on repeat. What is ESPN doing? What, what is going on? If we are so strong against domestic violence, what, it's basic advertisement. We might as well make a damn uh, poster and, and put it up on a billboard, a, a, a motion gif of... Ray Rice knocking his wife out because that's what we're doing daily. It, this subject is over with. All right. In the NCAA lifts Penn State's bowl bans. Did they suffer enough? Uh, no, uh, not at all. Um, I guess at, at the time I thought Penn State was is kind of blown out of proportion. But once they put down the ban and everything, you got to stick to it. And the reason for it is so horrendous that you know you got to stick to that. And the, you can see that Ohio State had the exact same length of a ban of bowls and scholarships as Penn State. That's for over some tattoos that the guy got for uh, selling his signature or autograph for memorabilia. We, like what, and what, Reggie Bush what got trouble for what, like jerseys or something? I don't, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's stupid. You are right. You are completely right when it comes to that. But I want to say, I mean, anything further would have been the death penalty for Penn State. Um, now, I'm not going to get into this huge debate because this is this is over and done with, but Joe Paterno, I, I just solely strongly believe that he, he did not know as much as everyone is opt to think he knew about the situation. Um, he passed away, so we'll never know. The answers are in the grave with him. Mm -hmm. um, but Penn State received basically the death penalty. Jerry Sandusky gets what he deserves. He should literally get the death penalty, um, basically, at least life in jail. Um, yeah. No parole. I agree to that. But Penn State... What about what about everyone else? What about the years of uh, of of you know the, the years that they they put together that haven't been like they're going to take Joe Paterno's win record away. Um, I mean Ty Cobb's a, a murderer. They didn't take his hit record away. Pete Rose is a gambler. He's not in the Hall of Fame. They didn't take his hit record away. Um, Barry Bonds took steroids. There's no asterisk on his name. He hit. He, he still holds the home run record. Mm -hmm. Why take Joe Paterno's win loss record away? He didn't cheat. No, he didn't no cheat, cheating. but this isn't what we're talking about. I knew I was going to get off top, <laughs> topic. But Penn State, yeah, I don't think it should have been that rough. I, I, I think um, they, they, anything more would have been the death penalty, and I agree, to, to let them have another chance because the people that are at fault are gone. Right. So yeah, I mean, let's they, move completely, forward, you know? they did completely overhaul everything. Yeah. And they were they still get, successful. They let the players get out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that everything they went through was pretty horrible. It, it was almost a death penalty because... But they did well with it, and uh, since they changed so much, they got... I mean, who was reduced. in the 80s got the death penalty? SMU. I mean, where are they yeah. still to this day? They're yeah, in a they're little, nothing conference, yeah. and Penn State is a powerful program. Miami and, and got pretty much the same treatment. They came back. But yeah. They, well, Miami's Miami, and it's different um, being... I want. I mean, that's the, that's the city. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. not as much the college. Uh, Miami's going to have a pro whatever or a, a collegiate whatever, just because the amount of people that are there, you know what I'm saying? Like, there will always be yeah, uh, a, a hot, main university a, in Miami. There will always be a baseball, uh, football, basketball team. There will always be. Yeah. You know, and it, it doesn't matter really what, what's done. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. That's not going to change. All right. Now we're going to go to the NFL. We're going to pick our two AFC and NFC uh, winners. Uh, go ahead. You start. Okay. In the what's NFC, good? I'm going to try and uh, not use this week as a reference, but I, I kind of want to go with, I think, the 49ers are going to stumble down the road in the playoffs or what something. 
I don't see them getting to where they were last year. So I got the Seattle Seahawks facing the Eagles. That's all I could come up with as the second best NFC team um, at this moment. And uh, so I have Seattle winning that game and going on to the Super Bowl. Then in the AFC, I got to go Broncos Patriots. Um, also, the, I mean, I, AFC's a lot weaker than the NFC. And I think the Patriots always get it together playoff time. So I got that. And then uh, we'll go Broncos <laughs> Seattle again for the Super yeah. Bowl with Seattle winning it. With Seattle winning, so yeah. you're the same thing. As yeah, I, I, I hate to do that, um, but it seems that way to me. I, I think Seattle has a Super Bowl hangover. We discussed that. I don't see. I see someone knocking them off their block. Yeah, they'll probably win the division. I was probably wrong. I picked the 49ers. They'll probably win the division. Seattle will. But I think somewhere along the line, I mean, even with home field advantage, someone's going to knock them off their block. They, they, no one wins back to back Super Bowls. The, the motivation. I mean, Marshawn Lynch held out a little bit. Uh, sure, Richard Sherman held out a little bit. All these things, you know, and and towards the end of the year. Um, the teams that are really putting it together, I think have. I mean, I think that I think. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to go with the 49ers because that's who I think is actually going to win the Super Bowl. Um, they going to have a rough start to the half of the year, uh, but I think they're going to click on all cylinders by the end of the year, and it's all about momentum. Even if they come in as a wild card, as long as they have that momentum and they have such depth that I mean, I can't fight against the, the 49ers. I would say 49ers and the Saints um, are going to face each other in the NFC, uh, and and with the 49ers winning, obviously. Um, AFC, I'm going to go with uh, the Colts and the Broncos. Um, it's hard for me to pick against the Broncos um, going back to the Super Bowl. Um, however, I do see the Colts could make a run at it. They possibly could. So I'm really in a toss-up at 50-50. We'll go with the Broncos. <laughs> right. uh, say the Broncos and the 49ers, and I still think that the NFC is just stronger um, no matter what. Yeah, and whoever 49ers. comes out of the NFC is going to win. And the 49ers just... If Kaepernick can even have a halfway decent year, even do what Alex Smith did two, three years ago and be a, a game manager, um, I think they're good because they have so much talent. Yeah, now. even I Gore mean, still looks good. They, so. they add, yeah, Gore looked good. They add Stevie Johnson. They add Brandon Lloyd. You already got Crabtree, Bolden, Vernon Davis. I mean, those are all those guys were number one guys at one point in their in their in, at their at their teams. Yeah. Now they're all together and they're all having the same main goal. They all haven't won a Super Bowl. I, I just see it clicking on all cylinders. One of those things where it all makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It all makes sense. Going to our last topic, which is going to be about the Atlanta Hawks. and Is this a Donald Sterling effect? Is that, That's my question. Is this a Donald Sterling effect? One of the six owners, because they have split ownership uh, for the Atlanta Hawks, uh, is Bruce Levinson of the Atlanta Hawks, turned in a racist email blast about two years ago. He turned it in, um, turning himself in and trying to sell his share. Uh, how do you take that? Is this a Donald Sterling uh, rollout? Yeah, I know. It kind of seems like... Um... Well, it has a lot to do with Donald Sterling, and uh, it a little sound a little conspiracy theorist of me to say that the um, it, this was dug up by a private investigator or something, and the guy had to turn himself in, or else he would be turned in, and everything would be worse for him. Uh, turning himself in makes it a little bit better. He's, his name's not going to be drug through the mud quite as much. And, uh, you know, he sells his and share. I could, and I could guess what it was said. I mean, it was about Luau Dang. Uh, I'm sure that he didn't get picked up. Uh, or he didn't sign with the Hawks, and he went to Miami, and I'm, I'm sure the N-word was dropped. That, And I'm sure that's what was said, or some type of email. But without a doubt, there's no tolerance for that. But you got to understand, me and you spoke about this. Um, in private, it's different. You don't know the demeanor. You don't know if it's a joke. You don't know, you know and not, not like racism is a joke. But let's all be honest here. 100% of you and everyone out there has said something racist in their life. And if it... If everything that was secret to you, if your phone and your email and all your phone conversations were put on blast and, and just nitpicked apart, you would have something in there that turns out to be racist uh, mm -hmm. to the rest of the world. And the guy doesn't want to deal with it. He's just <laughs> yeah. taking his ball and going home and saying, whatever amount of money I can get, I'm going to get it and I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Because he knows the shitstorms that's about to come his way. Yeah. Um, Bruce Levinson. And... I do think he's gone about his best. Way. I think he did. He yeah. did. He did go about the best way. He's not fighting, fighting with it like Donald Sterling is. Right. You know, uh, um, that because that you know, by block forever. by block. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I just like I said, I think. The, I mean, I still have the beef with Jay Z and wearing his chain to the Brooklyn Nets game on April whatever, and and uh, that's white, uh, black power type of crap. And nothing was said about that. I mean, I just kind of feel like. It doesn't work both ways, and honestly, it really doesn't. It really doesn't work mm -hmm. both ways. Um, if you're white, you got to keep your mouth tight. And, uh, <laughs> and if you're anything else, I mean, that sounds racist. Go put me on blast. <laughs> put me on ESPN. Do whatever you want, but, I mean, you're just not man enough or woman enough to admit to yourself 
that you've said something that would be categorized or viewed as racist. Because if not, you're a liar. You're a liar. Yeah, I guess, the, I don't know. You just gotta be careful. Like, you gotta be careful. Yeah, don't know. <laughs> Me and you, we've already said this before. We had enough jackass videos and stuff we've done since when I was in seventh grade that it would never allow me to be the president. <laughs> right. Just because of what I've, I've already done. And, and then, yeah. Uh, 90% of the stuff I've done I have on camera I need to burn and rip up <laughs> and all that because it's insane and absurd. And, and that stuff would be... you said on CDs that <laughs> other people have. Yeah, that other people do have. Yeah, it would never be let go. And, I mean, me, I could never be a political figure. I couldn't be anything. It's uh, all in prominent. joking, but yeah. still, people can take it the wrong way. And yep, and it is what it is, but... So, okay. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully you're not racist. <laughs> <laughs>